What's up everybody? So today, I just wanna show you how to use any Android phone plus the application Open Camera to make an awesome quality time-lapse. There are lots of different ways you can make a time-lapse using an Android phone or an iPhone. There are special apps that do it, but I try to stay away from those because they usually aren't like high on the control. Uh, they're missing certain things like, like tuning in the details of the exposure or bit rate or you know whether it's 4k or 1080p and all these things and you know I, I just want to produce the highest possible quality time lapse when I do a time lapse. Open camera gives you the ability to control everything from ISO to shutter speed to how long you shoot to how often it takes a picture. Um, so you know, one of the great things about that is that if you're shooting in low light situations, you can drop that shutter speed all the way down to, you know, one second or even two seconds, as low as four seconds per frame, which gives you, you know, just an enormous amount of light. And one of the reasons that's great is because, you know, with, with phones, tiny sensors, they can't get in low light the way that, you know, a full frame camera can. So it's gonna produce a lot of noise if you have a quick shutter speed. But if you, even on this tiny, tiny sensor, if you let the shutter stay open for a whole second or two seconds or whatever, then it's gonna produce a fairly noiseless image. And that's gonna be really good. Um, so, you know, let's just jump right in and I'll show you how to do it. So go ahead and open up open camera. So the first thing you're going to want to do is go into the settings. So go ahead and click on burst. And what this is going to do is tell your camera how many pictures you want to take. So for a time lapse, you want to click unlimited. The next thing you want to click is burst mode interval. And that's going to tell your camera how often to take a picture. You can do one second, two seconds, however many seconds you want to wait in between pictures. Uh, you know, if, if I'm in a rush, I'll do every one second. And then if I need to speed it up later, that's fine. You know, I'll, I'll usually record like a 20 minute or 25 minute time lapse at one second intervals. Another setting that is my personal preference, I like to turn force maximum brightness off. That way, while your camera is going through its time lapse, it won't be using as much battery. You can turn the brightness all the way down. Go to your resolution, and I always just pick the absolute highest resolution. And this is incredible but you get the option to choose raw images. So this is basically, if you do a time lapse with a bunch of raw images, one, it'll probably fill up your phone. It'll take all the space. And two, you'll have the ability to have 4K raw video out of your phone. It's pretty incredible I don't usually do this but it's an option I like to make sure the image quality is set to 100% and finally make sure you have camera 2 API enabled this is going to give you the ability to have a lot more settings such as controlling your ISO and your shutter speed. The rest of the process is pretty easy. You're just going to pick your focus point. You're gonna adjust your exposure. Uh, you can change your ISO. I would recommend always keeping your ISO down to the lowest part to reduce noise, um, either 50 or 100. 
you know, adjust your shutter speed to whatever is needed. If you want a long exposure during the daytime, you can use a ND filter. Uh, make sure you lock your exposure, but using manual exposure will automatically do that. And uh, then just click the shutter button and just let it go. Don't touch it. Let it run for however long you want to let it run. And when you come back, you'll have a really nice time lapse. Okay, one of the first things you'll need is a program called Bulk Rename Utility. And the reason you need this is because you need to be able to convert all of your image files that you've pulled off your camera into uh, like a like a zero zero one zero zero two zero zero three um, you know sequential pattern now uh, the way you do that is you know you uh, you highlight an image once you get this bulk rename utility installed you can just right click on any of these pictures and click on bulk rename here and it'll bring up this utility so what I do is just do control a and you have all of these here uh, and I just remove everything in the title so it just renames everything um, so here is the remove tab and then I go to numbering over here and I'm gonna add a prefix go ahead and hit rename it's gonna say okay now then I'm going to go and, and reset everything. And for these, I'm going to add zeros in the front. Uh, so then I'm going to go to prefix over here under the add tab, type in zero, zero, hit rename. And then here, so for number 10 through 90, I guess it depends on how many images you have. And I just use one zero. So now they theoretically should all be in order. Okay, so now Here's those same files, and they should all be in order. And I think these are just pictures of me at my desk. Yep. So uh, now that that's there, I'm going to go into Premiere and just File, Import. Here's my sample time lapse where I'm just sitting in a chair. Go to my first image. Make sure image sequence down here is checked. Hit open. And there you go. You can see it right down here. Um, now, because this is such a weird, uh, you know, weird crop, if I just drag it in, it's going to be this weird size. So you have to create a sequence first. Uh, go to new sequence. Uh, you can go to you know red, 4K UHD. So now when you drag this file in. It's going to ask you, do you want to change the settings? And just say, keep settings. And here you go. Uh, you will have to rescale it. So I think it's probably around 96 
percent. And then uh, you can play it. <laughs> and that's pretty much it. Then you can do file export.